All right, next up in the ECG course, still in level one, in the P waves unit. There are just three lessons. We talked about that best view being V1. Look at the morphology. Is it a sinus P wave? Well, yeah, if, it, if it's upright in lead one, two, three, AVL and AVF, and it is inverted in AVR, that is a sinus P wave. V1 is the very, very, very best lead for you to check out P waves because they come out of the atria, and that's where V1's camera is aimed. Then we talked about dropped beats, and the thing there when you have irregular rhythms, you have dropped beats, march out the P waves. Are the P waves coming on time, or does one come early? So a PAC would be early and weird looking compared to the other P waves. And now it's time to just close this up with conduction ratios, because when we start doing AV block analysis, conduction ratios becomes a term. We wanted to put it in here um, kind of in a, in a foundational uh, setting. When we say it's a dropped beat, what we really mean is that there's a P wave that does not conduct. So there's a P without a QRS. When we do uh, our EKG analysis, our stepwise approach that we teach is RPM ABC. R is for rate, regularity, then the P in RPM ABC, the P is, the questions you ask are simple. Is there a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P? And that's two different questions. You have to ask them both. Is there a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P? So the ratio of P's to QRS's is important. And that helps us with the definitions of some of these specific rhythms. So that's the deal. First step, make sure that P wave is not early and not ugly. Because early ugly P waves, that's a non-conducted PAC, move on. But if it's not a PAC, then it really has to be some version of a second degree AV block. It might be a type 1 called a Winkiebach or Mobitz 1. It might be a type 2 called a Mobitz 2. It might be a type 2 that's just 2 to 1 conduction. It might be a second degree AV block with high grade AV block. There's several different flavors of these, but the deal is let's make sure it's not a non-conducted PAC to start with. Let's make sure those P waves all marched out. They all came in on time and they all look the same. Ratio of P's to QRS's. So, so now we have some um, talking about these second degree AV blocks and really they are differentiated by two things. The conduction ratio, the number of P's per QRS. This is again assuming that the P's are coming on time and they're not early and ugly. But if they're coming on time, then it's a second degree AV block of some type. We need to look at conduction ratio and the PR interval. And that's the foundation to help you get through AV block determination. And you know we have seen some students have uh, a couple of signs of shock and migraine symptoms over AV blocks. We want you to not have that happen to you. Does Mrs. Smith really care? Not really. Mrs. Smith trusts you that you're smart and you care and you know what's going on and you've taken the time to be good at this stuff because being nice is important but and being smart is important but you got to put this, you got to be good, you got to translate knowledge into what she needs. And so she really doesn't need to know what type of AB block she's in as long as her ventricular rate's staying up. She can be in a second degree type Z or whatever, made up kind of uh, rhythm, but if the rate's 70, it's probably making a blood pressure. If the rate's 30, it probably ain't making a blood pressure. So um, that's why Mrs. Smith cares. And so the AV blocks may be a problem with perfusion, circulation, blood flow to the conduction system. And so you may identify something early on that's going to get worse or deadly and so that's why she cares. She wants you to be aware that something's about to happen to her. Skipped beats, uh, dropped beats are an important thing for us to know what we're doing with. What causes them? Well, there's a great big long list. Sometimes um, it is ischemia, low blood flow to the conduction system. Sometimes the conduction system parts are just old or they have some sort of disease. Sometimes it's medications the patient takes or it's party drugs that the patient takes, because cocaine really does stuff to your conduction system's function. Sometimes it's electrolyte imbalances, because think about it, <clears throat> the cells need potassium, calcium, magnesium, 
sodium, the electrolytes are involved in cells polarizing and repolarizing and depolarizing. And so if there's an electrolyte imbalance, you're going to have particularly issues with how those cells are working, which can cause you some problems with dropped beats. And so then the other last thing I wanted to do with this in this unit was talk about conduction system issues and kind of set the stage for a lesson down the road here. If there's a problem in the conduction system, it might be in the AV node, in the AV junction, or it might be lower in the bundle branches. You know what? They can, they can have multiple blocks. Our patients don't really cooperate. They don't read our textbooks. They don't read our protocols. And they have the absolute audacity to have more than one thing wrong at a time. And so they can have an AV block and a bundle branch block. And really, if you think about it, it's a conduction system block. And that's what we kind of wanted to set you up uh, to have that as a concept, a big idea that you understand. That conduction system is important. It keeps the atria and the ventricles synchronized. There's lots of parts in there. They all need constant blood flow and glucose flow, oxygen to make energy. They all need the same things that other cells need. And when they don't have those or they get sick or they start to malfunction, there can be problems all up and down the conduction system which can lead to rhythms that don't have a good rate, which leads to bad cardiac output, which leads to bad blood pressure, which leads to a very bad day. So um, this AV block versus bundle branch block, um, just kind of want you to think about that conceptually, and it's part of our where we start to discuss conduction system problems.